Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Football with Mike Lucas presented by Hawthorns right here on University Avenue and also by Tangipaho Reshaping Attitudes for Community Change. I'm Alan Waddell. We have an exciting episode for you. Over the next half hour, we'll take a look at the Lions home opener against the University of Tennessee Martin Skyhawks. We'll also have uh, our feline question of the week, also our Lion play of the week. We have a lot for you coming up over the next half hour. Well, let me welcome to the show the head football coach of the Southeastern Lions, Coach Mike Lucas. Coach, thanks for being here. Let's jump right into it. A big victory, you even your record at one and one. One and one, Lions win. That's the most important thing. And uh, did some really good things. We did some things that we need to work on against a good opponent. Tennessee Martin's got a good football team, very athletic football team. And, uh, you know, Coach Simpson does a great job with those guys, and I knew they'd be tough. But uh, we won the ball game 24 to 10. We're excited about that. Well, Coach, the theme going into the week was a new quarterback this week, Brian Young, starting. You thought you were going to have to rely on your defense and also on the running game. Well, Coach, the running game really responded to 100 yard rushers in Zeke Jones and Sam Fairley. First time since uh, brought the program back in 03 that we had two 100-yard rushers. And it says a lot about the offensive line. The offensive line did a fantastic job run blocking and, and gave Brian time to throw all night also. Well, Coach, while your defense did give up some yardage, did only hold those guys to 10 points and also caused several turnovers that really turned over. Also scored a touchdown on defense late in the game, really sealing that one. We felt like uh, we gave up too many big plays. You know, we, we talk about a play over 20 yards being called an explosive, and, and we don't want to give up more than two explosives a game. We gave up six in that football game. And we can't do that. Uh, we'll make some corrections this week on some coverage things. But uh, we did have five takeaways. You know, in the two-lane game, we lost the takeaway battle 4-2. to two. This week, uh, we won the takeaway battle 5-1. to one. And uh, that's the most important statistic there is in football is the takeaway battle. So, so we won that this week. Well, the Lions, a two-touchdown winner over the University of Tennessee Martin Skyhawks this past weekend at Strawberry Stadium. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights as the Lions won in week two. You're watching Inside Look at Southeastern Football presented by Hawthorns on University Avenue and also by Tangipaho Reshaping Attitudes for Community Change. Welcome back to an Inside Look at Southeastern Football presented by Hawthorns on University Avenue and also by Tangipaho Reshaping Attitudes for Community Change. It was a 6 o'clock kickoff at Strawberry Stadium for the Lions home opener. Let's check out the first half highlights against the Skyhawks. Well, we had a great crowd for the uh, Lion Walk. Fantastic uh, group around Friendship Circle. Our players are really excited to see such a great crowd out there cheering us on. Here we come out uh, for the opening kickoff. And here we are with an unbalanced line call on a second and seven. And Zeke Jones, first touchdown of the ball game. Great run by Zeke. Outstanding call. Outstanding job of game planning by offensive coordinator Alan Rudolph. You can see here the hole that Zeke had. We get Zeke going downhill. He's hard to bring down. Great way to start off the game seven, zip. Here it is on fourth and seven, and a sack by Devin Walker. We twist the defensive tackles up front, and uh, Devin Walker getting a sack. Sam Fairley, very nice job by our offensive line. Big hole for Sam to hit. You know, Sam had 108 yards on the night. Very nice run by Sam Fairley. Sam's a very quick young man, can really get it up the field. Great crowd, great enthusiasm on the sideline, our cheerleaders marching band. They try to go play action pass, go deep post. Good job here by Rakeem Wilson. That's Rakeem's second interception on the season. Rakeem led the Southland Conference last year in interceptions. Here's a third and eight. BJ picks up a bad snap. The ball's tipped up in the air and a nice catch by Simi downfield. Simi in the right place at the right time on the tip ball. Here's our offense moving the ball inside to 30. Great blocking up front by our offensive line. Picked up a slant that they were running with their defensive front. Another touchdown, this time a long run by Sam Fairley. You can see here the hole. See Paul Rapolo, 74, the right tackle, stepping inside and keeping that defensive end from pinching in the gap. Nice block there by backfield mate Zeke Jones to spring Sam on the touchdown. Nice play there by uh, Nathan Clofus. Nathan's been playing very physical football these first two weeks. Senior from Sulphur, Louisiana. This was a fourth and one play where they went with a heavy package, two tight ends. Very nice job here by our defensive line, Steven Pashinsky. Big play, holds him on a fourth and one, gives the ball back to our offense. 
Here's a very physical run by Zeke. Zeke breaks about six tackles on this run. Very nice job. Here's a throw outside. Watch how many people Brandon Collins makes miss. Four people miss tackles there. Nice gain up the field. Brandon, just an unbelievable athlete. Here's a 37-yard uh, field goal attempt by freshman kicker Seth Sebastian. It's good. Puts us up 17-0. Their quarterback trying to come back, throws the ball down the middle. Interception by Tommy Connors. Tommy read the route very well, got underneath the post. Our second interception on the night. Here again, they get the ball back. Big sack by Nathan Clofus. We had three sacks on the night, had pressure on their quarterback all night long. Great job up front, pass rushing by our guys. Now this is one of the last plays of the half. They had a fourth and 12, trying to throw it in the end zone. Interception by Clint Coleman. We miss a block to our left. A chance to run that one back for a touchdown, but we stepped out of bounds. We held them to 224 yards in the first half. They ended up with 525. We will give up 300 yards in the second half, which uh, does not please me very much. We got to get some things corrected. Coach, you're leading 17 nothing at halftime in this ball game. Uh, you have the game in control, but you know it is a long second half to play. Yeah, you know, we always talk about the most important drive of the game is the first drive of the third quarter so that, uh, you know, because coaches will go in and make adjustments at halftime and we, we want to make good adjustments and come out fired up again in the third quarter. So uh, we played well in the first half, up by 17, but we still had a lot of work to do at halftime. Well, let's go back out to Strawberry Stadium and check out the second half highlights. Here we are coming out in the second half. Uh, we have to play defense in the first series. They ran a little split draw. Nice tackle by Mark Newbill. I believe Mark had 14 tackles in this game. Third and four. This was a blitz to the top, and our defensive end was supposed to drop into the flat, and he didn't drop wide enough. Gave them a first down in field goal range, and we hold him on uh, fourth down, and they kick a field goal. Give them the ball back. So they get another drive. There's a nice tackle there, team tackle. We blitz off the edge. Kieron Jones misses the tackle in the open field, and we give them a long touchdown pass. We must make that tackle in the open field. B.J. Young coming back, nice throw to uh, Corey Theodore. Corey had a nice, again, another nice game for us. Here's another throw to uh, Simi. Simi and Brandon Collins both had six catches on the night. Nice call here by the head football coach on the uh, fake punt. Bo Moth on the, we've been working on that fake for a while and got the sideline excited. Bo with a very nice run to get the first down. Great pressure by Devin Walker. Great hustle by Devin Botwell making the quarterback force a bad throw. He throws it right to Tommy Connors. Tommy runs it in for the touchdown. So we get an interception for a touchdown. Tommy's second interception on the night. Get a little enthusiasm going there with the, uh, Linebackers on top of Tommy. You can see here the pressure coming inside, forcing the quarterback to scramble. He scrambles to his right. He's looking downfield. Devin Botwell takes a great pursuit angle, so the quarterback has to throw it, and he throws it right to Tommy. I don't know what he was seeing, but he hits Tommy right between the one and the nine. Tommy gets the ball in the end zone, and then the hardest hit he took all night, Devin Botwell clotheslines him here in the end zone. Extra point by Seth Sebastian puts us up 24-10. So you can see the final stats. We definitely have to play better in the second half, but we'll take the win. Lions win 24-10. So coach, you hold on for a big victory. You even your record at one and one. They get back in the ball game and it takes a defensive score late to really put it away. Yeah, you know, the first drive of the third quarter, we give up a field goal and then our offense goes three and out. And then we give up a touchdown on a missed tackle. Gosh, uh, you know, we let them back in it again. And uh, we can't do those things. We got to be able to put people out. You know, our key word for the season is finish. 
we did finish strong defensively. We got to be able to continue moving the ball on offense uh, throughout that second half. Well, the Lions win it by two touchdowns over the Skyhawks and even their record at one and one. Let's take another break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Lion big play of the week right here on an inside look at Southeastern football presented by Hawthorne's Restaurant on University Avenue and also by Tangible Hill Reshaping Attitudes for Community Change.